hello, I'm Lillian from TBD&D, um, and this is our very professional setup, um, and this is our very professional set tour. Before we get into the tour, I just wanted to thank you all for your patience with us, um, and especially for all of your support and interest. This is not our job, and even though we've been planning on releasing content for a while, we didn't think anyone would actually watch it. So this has been amazing and overwhelming and just crazy. So sorry we've been so behind on content. We're working out and getting a schedule. You guys have no idea how much we want to just plunge you into our story, but since we're entirely homebrew and we got our current setup mid-campaign, we want to give you guys an introduction to the world first. An overarching campaign recap and world explanation will be up here on YouTube by March 18th after which we'll finally start releasing our sessions. We love you guys, we love this community, and we cannot wait to be a part of it. And with that, on to the tour. This room, obviously it was very different from this. The uh, walls, it was just drywall with like this weird, 70s wooden paneling. There's a few things that have like bled through and stayed here from the original wall. So these light switches, these were here. Obviously we've covered them and I will talk about how. And there's also this thing. This thing is completely non-functional. In fact, I have no idea what it does, but it was technically live wiring. So I just left that there. But anyway, this sword here we got from a Ren fair. It is very sharp, which is funny since it is right by the light switches. So that's a little dangerous, but it's fine. So this door, it leads into the regular outside world. Behind this, it's just a regular door that you see in every house. And all I've done is I took one by sixes, I believe. So these boards here, boom, 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 boom. I cut those so that they're the exact height of the door. And it was actually great. On this particular door, I think this is a 36 inch wide door. Six planks fit in perfectly, which was really nice. I took a nail gun, a finished nail gun, and I just attached this to the door itself. Most doors inside homes, they're usually they make them kind of hollow. So then I kind of went around and on the corners where in the door itself, it's like there's thicker wood. You put screws in to make sure that everything's super solid. And then you take one by fours, just these guys here. They're kind of just decorative pieces that you put along the bottom and the middle and the top. As for the more decorative stuff, I got just from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. It's a nice like metal handle. There's this guy which is like a metal deadbolt and uh, it, it locks up. And then I got these two little decorative pieces. You could find these at, they sell stuff very similar to this, Lowe's, Home Depot. Moving to the exterior of the door, same exact one by sixes. Lay these onto the, the frame of the door and then you put one over the top. And the one you put over the top, you want to make sure that there's like an inch or two gap to prevent as much sound bleed as possible. I got seals for the, uh, the sides, rubber things that you kind of staple in so that when the door shuts, it kind of seals it. And then I do that for the top as well. At the top of the door, Ashley, who plays Odie in our campaign, a goat folk character, she made uh, these, they're the horns of her characters with little decorative bits. So I don't know, we've mounted that above the door. This table is actually a couple years old. I made this back in 2020? Yep, it was quarantine table. Yeah, 2020 when I couldn't go to school. It's pretty nice, all of our mics are attached to it right now, so it's a little hard to see. There's this recessed area with like this nice kind of felt material on the bottom. And if you follow me, This is my area, I suppose. We'll maybe have to make a, a separate video about the various technologies in the room, um, like the, the Steam Deck, which I can play music and a bunch of other stuff from. Now we have the TV. 
I don't know how well that'll show up on camera, but um, this TV is really cool. I can change just directly from here the looped video onto the TV. So for example, I can make it into this. Wait a second. And there it goes. Medieval dungeon. Or I can do this. A uh, graveyard. It's framed. The TV sits inside of this like frame thing that is built on the wall. These bits of wood down here, they're like decorative, but they also serve a purpose. For example, on this one, they're both hollow and we have, there's actually wiring that runs through these and actually kind of down this brick. And that's how I can connect to the computer and stuff like that. There's a sound bar right here for music and there's also surround sound speakers in the back on the bar. The lighting I have up here, if you look, there's one right there. This is a Parcan DMX light. It's a super cheap one. Each one of these was like, I want to say 10, 15 bucks. So they're not the nicest, but they they do their, their purpose. Um, eventually I will get a DMX controller. So you basically uh, get these cables that you plug into the Parcan lights and then you I'll run them across the ceiling and then down somewhere to my computer where I can control them more efficiently. But for now, I've been controlling them with this crappy uh, remote control that came with them. So if you look, I can change them red or yellow or pink or green, blue. This wall is a bar, uh, quote unquote. Um, obviously not a very functional one. Um, Pretty simple. So this main shelf down here, this table, it's just a large stretch of wood. I just rested it onto the top of the brick, nailed that into the wall, and then this guy is connected to the ceiling and to this wood, and it holds the whole thing up. And then these shelves, I found them, they looked perfect. I didn't even have to stain them, they came just like that. Um, you can make these pretty easy, you just get brackets and attach them to wood and stain the wood and it would look great. And then obviously there's a ton of decorations. We've got daggers, jars, potions, alcohol bottles that are empty. And then there's this guy, I made this one, uh, very proud of it. It's just a wooden disc, which I carved and wood burned, a little self plug-in there with uh, swords in the back. There's some books and a gun here. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun but it's like a cool, cool prop gun. There are these lanterns. They were super cheap. They're battery powered, which is nice. So they don't have to be plugged into anything. I just got these large hooks from, again, Hobby Lobby. And there's a bunch of little candles in there, mini fridge. There's a shrunken head here, dice. The walls themselves. First of all, all the walls, everything, um, is technically covered in foam completely, like insulation foam. I got it from Lowe's or Home Depot. It's the white foam with the kind of aluminum foil backing. So not only does it help with temperature regulation in this room, because it, it can get like kind of warm or cold, so that helps with that, but also sound. It um, not only reduces the echo in the room, but also the outside noises, especially because like there's a street right out there. It helps with that a ton. This brick, it's like the two inch thick insulation foam. There's this, uh, tool, it's like a, a chalk line thing. It's a construction tool for like framing and stuff. But any like yardstick, anything that you can do to get straight lines um, works out great. It comes in these long like sheets because obviously not one sheet can cover this whole bit. So you take one sheet of the foam and you're gonna wanna pick how big your brick is. If you look, the lines of grout that run horizontally they line up with each other from each individual foam board so it all looks like a unison thing of brick. Like this bottom one is like eight inches. Then this next one is two inches. This next one's four, three, two. And you do those exact same measurements for every single sheet of foam. That's basically all you need to do for measurements. The rest of the individual bricks doing the vertical 
drawing you can just do on the fly with the, the heat knife. You'll kind of know when you're doing it how big each brick will kind of be and whichever looks best for you. I wanted to go for more along the bottom where like the foundation foundation is. I wanted those bricks to be significantly larger than the ones above it. But you want it to look random um, and preferably you don't want any of the grout lines to align with one another. After that, you do the texturing. And the best way that I found to do the texturing, I tried a lot of things like the uh, tin foil, you roll it up and you roll that on there, but that takes forever. So I got a heat gun, which is super cheap. I got it for like 30 bucks at Home Depot. And you basically just go along the entire surface of the brick, everything. And you wanna make sure that you kind of leave it and melt certain areas more than others to kind of give that random and rough kind of look. And you can actually kind of shape and mold it with the heat gun, which is really nice. Moving on to this part of the wall. All of this is foam across the entire wall. All of this is foam. This is smaller foam than the stuff that the brick is made out of. It's half inch insulation foam, that white foam, aluminum backing. You face the aluminum backing out of the room for everything. And for this, I wanted it to have that very kind of stucco, like old Tudor style sort of look and texture to it where it's kind of rough. I took drywall screws or these small screws and I just screwed the foam to the wall. It's actually really solid. Once that's there, this was actually one of the more fun parts to do. You get, um, again, Home Depot or Lowe's. I got these big buckets of, it's called drywall mud. It comes pre-mixed, but um, for this sort of thing, you want it to be a little easier to spread. So you're gonna add some water and then you're gonna mix it. You'll get like these uh, mudding knives, basically, or like pallet things, just directly onto the foam. You just spread this stuff. It dries super solid. So I mean, that's pretty dang solid. There's still that foam behind it though, so it's it's got the good um, sound absorption and everything. As far as painting goes, so I, I mounted all of these before I did the painting. It would work either way, you paint them before you install them, but this is what I personally did. I just uh, put them on here and then painted. And I painted with a, a paint sprayer. I got a paint sprayer at Home Depot. It was the cheapest one I could find for like 75, 80 bucks. The foam starts out white. I took like this kind of dark gray paint and I painted the entire surface, everything, make sure getting in all the cracks, doing all that, doing a couple passes. Just regular like wall paint that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, let that dry. And then comes kind of the tricky part. So what I did after, and this is probably hard to tell on camera, even in person, it's very subtle. I just went around with kind of a more brown and a more orange kind of paint. And I, again with the paint sprayer, um, I just got really close and did like singular bricks of just this brown and then red and I just kind of did it randomly. I then painted over the entire thing with a lighter gray. You can still see those browns and reds kind of seeping through but it's a lot more subtle. And then after that came the probably the most important part which is the dry brush. You're gonna take just a pure white you're gonna get like a big brush, dip the brush in there and then get a paper towel and get like 90% of the paint off the brush. And then you're just gonna kind of take the brush with this motion kind of going at all different angles and it kind of just highlights the, the texture. We actually painted this after we did the wood, which in retrospect, we probably could have done it in an easier way, but also, the effect I was going for, I kind of needed to know where the wood would be. Because obviously, if this was on like a real building, the wood would kind of rot and water would kind of seep through the cracks of the wood and along the edges of the wood and the stone, you would see a little bit more wear compared to like the middle sections. After the wood was put up, we taped off the wood to keep it safe. I used a paint sprayer for this. What I used was kind of a lighter tan as a base coat. And then you did a more uh, yellow brown, like uh, overcoat. You want it to not look like one, 
kind of base color and you actually kind of want it to look kind of splotchy. I then took the paint sprayer and along the edges of the wood, if you see, I did like a darker pass. So by the wood itself, it's a little bit darker and then it fades. Another detail down here, um, cause obviously this stuff and the brick is two separate pieces of foam and you need to blend them together. I took drywall mud and I kind of just filled all the cracks of the seam with that and it, it blended things in really nicely, I think. The wood was a little tricky because I'm, I'm not a professional framer by any means. It was a little tricky in particular to figure out the angles because if you look, like down here is a good example. This board and this board, you have to cut them at an angle in which they can like nicely hug onto this board. And that goes for everything. So that goes to all this, you have to cut that at an angle. You have to cut this board at an angle to connect into this. You have to cut this board at an angle to go onto the ceiling. So it's a lot of angle cuts. I used a chop saw with this. I cut this one fine. This one I cut okay, and it, it got in somewhat all right, but there was still a gap, and in here there was a big gap. So there's actually a tiny bit of wood here that is not part of this board. And then I filled the rest with like wood paste, because I just, I, I didn't get the angle right. That's okay, you live and learn. Once all the boards were on, I stained them, so, um, and I used a nail gun to mount all the boards and then I filled the nail holes with uh, wood filler so that uh, you don't see them. And then you sand everything, make it really smooth. And then I got this polyurethane um, wood stain mixture from Lowe's or Home Depot and you just basically brush it on just with a big brush or a sponge. You can do this either before you make the cuts and mount them to the wall or after, I would say doing it before is probably easier. Um, that is not what I did. I mounted the wood first and then stained them once they were on the walls, which it worked out fine. But um, if I were to do it again, I would, I would definitely change the order of things. If you look past all that mess, there are beams of wood like from an old tavern or whatever running along the ceiling. They are decorative. They make the ceilings look not so like disconnected. And I painted the ceiling the same as I did the, the rest of the walls. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry for the abrupt ending. Per usual, our DM Connor left this footage on a cliffhanger. <laughs> We've been so excited to share this with you. Uh, let us know if you want a full tech tour of our mics and our cameras and how we control the TV. And be sure to subscribe here and follow us on our socials if you want to see more of content like this. We're very excited to finally start streaming sessions. And we hope you're excited to watch them because they're kind of awesome, so. You'll definitely enjoy them. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, you guys. Bye.